every Saturday. That day we were standing at uh, uh, the Aquatic Park in Berkeley, and my sifu uh, Han Xingyuan from Hong Kong he had come over, and then we had uh, we were standing, and he was doing the correction of each of my students there. Now, as you can see, we are both standing, and uh, most of them are old people becoming, you know, every Saturday for the last few years. Now, what is this standing supposed to do? Has it got a purpose other than a meditative purpose of standing? Well, the standing in Chinese is called zhong. It's a really, you can, we can equate something like uh, the posture, postural alignment. Basically, we always encountering with um, gravitation. You know, whether we know it, whether we don't know it, and all of us are expert in working with gravitation. But really, we don't, you know, uh, experience it or we work with it in depth. So one of these processes is to, st to stand in a uh, very relaxed manner but holding out a posture. And we try to relax in the posture and this will train us into, uh, into really getting in depth with relaxation. Basically relaxation is a, a form of uh, tension evenly distributed all over the body. So all these people are standing, holding a very definite posture. Excuse me, one of these ladies is shaking a little. Uh, is that part of it? Well, everybody reacts differently when you're holding in a still motion. The, the kind of jumping, jerking is usually a, a, a form of release of energy, like a lot of people with a holding pattern. And when the tension is not evenly distributed in the body, it will be holding a certain part of the body. When we are standing in a posture, and therefore the energy will run evenly when we go hit on those blocks, and they're trying to get through, and it will physically manifest it as a shaking form. And you will see more of that later. And uh, the, the uh, other teacher there, he seems to be adjusting the people. Is there a particular fine adjustment? Yes. Based on the experience of the teacher, he can see, he can feel whether the posture that the student holding, whether it is most appropriate to work with gravitation. What he tried to do is to put the person in a very center position, as you would put a pencil or put an egg on a flat table. Right, a flat table, an egg of the form, so if you put it right, you, the egg can stand up on the table. We don't put right, it won't. Same thing with a pencil. So we put a human being, he's a moving. He's a moving creature, and therefore you had to hold it in a posture with your experience, and you were actually just shaping the person. Because most people, they won't change their posture. You can constantly shaping it, and it grow into it. More or less like uh, people shaping a bonsai tree. You cannot overdo it, it will break. So little by little, he put you in that position, and you stand, and you will change your posture. Now is this... Uh is beneficial health-wise, or is it, a, or is it a martial art, or is it both? Well, any kind of martial art must have a good sound health. Martial arts builds up from health. If you do not have good health, and you would not be able to execute all those things. And besides, a martial art is self-defense. Self-defense is nothing more but an extension of protecting this health state that you're in, be it physical or mental. Now he's adjusting, making a fine adjustment on your hands. Uh, basically what we do is trying to put the hand in all the limbs, that's my little daughter, right now, <laughs> uh, to put it in such a way that the blood or certain other thing in the Chinese traditional medicine called qi, that can flow freely without any obstruction. Uh -huh, that's really very interesting. That's a, a close-up of you. Yes. Now you're uh, starting to move. Is this a... Uh, well, that is another scene. This is, I, I'm going to perform a, a small portion of a Tai Chi Chuan. And this is about three minutes. I'm doing it uh, at the back of my house. Now this is a movement as it compared to the stand. Yes, it's compared to the stand, it is a movement, but yet you look at it carefully. It's nothing more but a very many, many 
posture put together, changing from one posture to another in a very smooth manner. So actually, movement is nothing more but a changing of postures. Uh huh. And this also deals with the chi that you talked about. Oh yes. It, well, basically, in all kind of human activities, movement we deal with two major things. The chi in Chinese is a much more comprehensive than just the air. Outside in the atmosphere, we call chi. It's the air. Inside a human body, it is something always always equate with blood, like shi chi means blood and chi. It's something circulating like like the veins, which like as you can see, you know, in the meridian chart in the human body, when a person is alive, the chi of almost like aura, circulating, moving. When it's healthy, it manifests in a healthy pattern. When it's obstructed and not healthy, it is in a obstructed, not healthy pattern. Now, so the chi we're working with it. By using a feeling, touching from the outside, by letting it go in the inside, then it flows freely. And the second factor is we work with gravitation. Then we go back to the posture. It is in the center, balanced posture. And movement is many of those postures. If every posture is centered and balanced, your movement will be centered and balanced. Now, do these each one of these postures do they have a name? In the, in the in the Tai Chi Chuan tradition, yes, each one we do have a a name, but the name mostly a name after a fixed pattern, which you were able to recognize when you go and do Tai Chi Chuan. But in between, from one posture changing to another, is a path, and therefore from one posture moves another posture. In general, we can call it a path. But if you look at it, study it in detail, the path is nothing more but consisting of many, many little postures. That's the end of、uh, my little small demonstration.